Hey guys, I'm Michelle, I was W07. Welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. Last episode, we made our way through Viridian Forest and found ourselves in Pewter City with the first major gym. And today, well, we're taking on that gym. As I mentioned last part, this is, of course, the Rock Gym featuring iconic gym leader Brock. Uh, Spiro, what are you doing up front? That's a very bad position for you to be in because Rock is very good against flying types, keep that in mind. And let's go forth. Stop right there, kid! You're 10,000 light years from facing Brock, but he's right over there. Do you understand what a light year is, kid? Because I don't think you do. So yes, Camper Liam. Everyone in the same gym as the gym leader, so you have the same types of Pokemon, and we got a new Pokemon, actually. Geodude. This is your standard run-of-the-mill rock ground type in terms of just overall being very offensive and defensive physically, but very slow and lacking good defense special, at least in terms of special stats. And when it evolves into Golem, it's kind of alright, I think, but it suffers from Rock and Ground being a kind of bad weakness to both Grass and Water. It gets four times weakness from both Grass and Water, as I will now demonstrate. Basically, if you pick Bulbasaur or Squirtle, this gym is going to be a breeze for you. And you're going to get free experience, so there's always that. <laughs> All right, he's going to send out next a Sandshrew. This is a bit different. Sandshrew is a pure ground type, and it's a little bit better, I think. It's still kind of slow, but being pure ground means it has less weaknesses and less powerful weaknesses compared to Geodude, and it's all right. I think this Pokemon gets a lot better in later gens, but God, in this one, it is so bad. I thought about using one for my team, but oh my goodness, the final evolution of this dude learns like nothing good. It's best ground move that it'll get in terms of level ups, is Sand Tomb, a base 15 power move. You have to teach it anything else if you want something useful if that is also the same type of attack bonus on this dude, so be careful. You won't get Earthquake, you won't get Dig, you won't even... I think your best move actually is Slash, and really, if that's your best, odds are you need something else. Oh! Speaking of need something else, jeez. I was expecting a crit. Thanks, game. Well, good thing Emperor is here to take care of this. Also, my audio might sound a bit different because, um, I made a bit of a recording flub. Um, usually I record my audio and my video separately, but for some reason, my last three episodes, I apparently forgot to turn that off, so my audio and video recorded as one. It should be fine, at least it seemed fine when I checked on it, but just to be safe, I'm splitting it up from now on. <laughs> Darn! Light uses in time, it measures distance, now you're thinking. Let's, uh, go back and heal. And as you can see, we still haven't come up with a name for Spiro, um, because, well, by the time that I'm recording this, the Let's Play hasn't even gone up yet, so that question will remain unanswered for me for a bit. I'm sure I'll get some sort of answer soon, but, eh, I gotta wait. But of course, anytime Pokemon faints, it's always good just to go to the Pokemon Center, because if it's fainted, can't use it in battle whatsoever. It's pretty much just dead weight, so just heal it up as fast as you can. We could get items to heal up Pokemon from Revive without having to go here, but we get those later in the adventure. We don't have those right now. Okay, and I think you're actually very close to a level up, Spiro. Yes, you are! Seven! Oh. One seven isn't lucky. Okay. Um, is it worth putting you in front to start off the gym? Actually, yeah, you'll be fine. Because we're going to switch out immediately. This is a common strategy for leveling up weaker Pokemon is put them in front and then switch them out for the stronger ones so they get at least half experience. You'll be usually using this on, actually, a Pokemon we're going to be getting relatively soon. Um, but uh, we'll save the explanation for that when we get there. Basically just, if you have some weak Pokemon that are much lower level in your team and you want to catch them up, this is a good strategy for it. But hey, it's Brock. Let's see what he has to say. So you're here. I'm Brock. I'm Pewter's gym leader. My rock-hard willpower is evident even in my Pokémon. My Pokémon are all rock-hard and have true grit determination. That's right, my Pokémon are all the rock type. Fwahaha! <laughs> You're going to challenge me knowing that you'll lose? That's the trainer's honor that compels you to challenge me. Fine then, show me your best! And it's boss fight time. And I do love the Fire Red Leaf Green remix for the uh, gym leader theme, it's awesome. Of course, he starts out with Geodude, level 12. It is, once again, rock ground type. So don't have a flying type in front and have it fight. Have a grass type or a water type. And if you pick Charmander, good luck. <laughs> but no, there is something they added to Charmander to give him a little bit of leeway here. I believe in Generation 3 specifically, he can learn Metal Claw leveling up, which is a steel type move. Steel was added in later gens after Generation 1, and it is super effective on rock, so that's kind of useful. All right, Vine Whip. And just like that, you're taken care of. 
All right, level up for Spiro. Nice. And more experience at level 13. I think we're actually getting close to learning some new moves and getting close to evolving. Um, starter Pokemon typically, or not typically, always have two stages of evolution. Keep that in mind whenever you need it. And Spiro actually only has one stage of evolution, but, he will, but both of them will get there through level up. There are other methods of evolution, of course, but we haven't encountered them yet on our adventure. And here's Brock's ace, Onyx. Onyx is, at this point in the game, definitely the toughest Pokemon you'll be encountering. It's got super high defense of, like, base 160, I want to say. At this point, that is the highest number of any stat we've encountered so far. If you don't have something that can hit special stats, you're going to be in trouble. And it hits relatively hard for a gym leader Pokemon. But we have a grass type, so it's fine. <laughs> I don't know, I think Onyx is an alright Pokemon, but I think it gets better in later gens, and sadly you can't get its evolution of Steelix in this generation, because that's just how Fire and Leap Green work. You can't get later gen evolutions of Pokemon from Gen 1. But hey, we beat Rock. I took you for granted, and so I lost. As proof of your victory, I confer on you this. The official Pokemon League Boulder Badge. That's badge number one. Eight badges in total to get, so one down, seven to go. Just having the Boulder Badge makes your Pokemon more powerful. It also enables the use of the move Flash outside of battle. You mean I could take my pants off? That, that's terrible, Brock. I know you're a pervert, but come on. Of course, the Pokemon must know the move Flash to use it. And we get $1,400 for winning. The most money we've seen so far, that's for sure. Wait, take this with you. And we also get Technical Machine 39 from Brock. We always get a TM for beating a Gym Leader. Technical Machines are special discs you can teach certain Pokemon to give them new moves. A TM, Technical Machine, contains a technique for Pokemon. Using a TM teaches the move it contains to a Pokemon. A TM is good for only one use. At least in this gen. We changed that come Generation 5, so that's no longer a factor, and god, I'm, I love Gen 5. That's one of the best changes to the franchise, and my goodness, I'm making weird sounds with these words today. So when you use one, pick the Pokemon carefully. Anyways, TM39 contains Rock Tomb. It hurls boulders at the foe and lowers its speed, and as you'd expect, it is a Rock-type move, so it's kind of useful. But I don't think we have anything that can actually learn that today. Um, let's check the bag. When you get TMs, they wind up in your new TM case. Oh, went the wrong way. And yeah, it is a base 50 power, 80 accuracy move. Not terrible, but not great. And yeah, near, neither one of these two can learn it. I don't think we're going to be getting anything anytime soon that can learn it. But there is one Pokemon that I'm going to be getting that we might have a use for this on. But I don't know. We'll have to see that when we get there. But for now, let's uh, head over here. The Pewter Museum of Science. Science? I love science. Yes, yes, it's uh, $50 for a child's ticket. Would you like to come in? Sure, why not? I got the money to spare. Now, ordinarily, this place isn't too important, but I just want to explore a bit. I should be grateful for my long life. Never did I think I would get to see the bones of a dragon. Aerodactyl fossil, a primitive and rare Pokemon. Yep. Uh, as you may know from Pokemon anime or just Pokemon in general, there are fossil Pokemon. Ancient Pokemon from ancient times that... Well, it doesn't seem to be any easy, easy way to get them back in this present day. Kabutops fossil. Primitive and rare Pokemon. This month we're running a space exhibit. Ooh, gotta love space. Uh, what are you? Space shuttle. <laughs> Great name, guys. Yeah, Pikachu soon, I promise. I want a Pikachu! It's so cute! I asked my dad and he catch me one. Well, good luck waiting around for that 5% encounter rate unless you get lucky like I did. What do you have to say? Moonstone, huh? What's so special about it? Looks like an ordinary rock to me. A meteorite that fell on Mount Moon. It is thought to be a moonstone. <laughs> July 20th, 1969. Humankind first set foot on the moon that day. That is true. That is actually pretty accurate. I bought a color TV just so I could watch the news. That's actually a pretty important day in history. I'm surprised they acknowledge that. It's something I always found kind of weird about the original generation of Pokemon is that when you look at like the design of it compared to, say, Generation 2 onwards, it's a lot more... I don't want to say mundane, but... I guess grounded in reality is better. Later gens are definitely more fantastical and feel more like, you know, RPGs, more fantasy themed, but this one just feels a lot more just, oh hey, this is real life. Fight with this lizard you caught, I guess. I don't know, it just seems kind of weird to me. Plus, this is the only time they like acknowledge actual historical events in the series. But anyways, uh, now that we're taking care of that, we can head this way. Oh, Kyle! I'm glad I caught up to you. I'm Professor Oak's aide. I've been asked to deliver this, so here you go. Oh, thank God. If you're what I think you are. Yes! Oh my God, I'm so happy. These are the running shoes. These were added in Generation 3 as a faster form of movement. Press the B button to run, but only when there's room to run. Well, I must be going back to the lab. Bye-bye. 
You did not have this in the original Pokemon Gen, or Generation 2 for that matter. This... Oh god, I'm so glad we have these, finally. Dear Kyle, here's a pair of running shoes for my beloved Challenger. Remember that I'll always cheer for you, don't ever give up. From Mom. Aw, thanks. So yeah, just hold down B and we can run. Significantly faster than just having to walk everywhere. But for now, we're on to Route 3. And as you can see, we uh, got a lot of trainers here, actually. Looks like a good time to actually farm experience. Excuse me? You looked at me, didn't you? Actually, no. I, uh, didn't. You looked at me. Very bold of you to assume that I would even look at you, random lady. Or is, or even if that is your real name, Last Janice. But yeah, this will be a pretty good opportunity to get some more levels on Spiro and for possibly Emperor if we need to catch him up, but I don't think we will. This is mostly going to be a good spot for Spiro to gain ex experience. And hopefully not die from a random critical hit again, because that was... Ugh. There's one thing you never enjoy in Pokemon, it's random critical hits. At least when they happen to you. When they happen for you, it's great. But yeah, mostly people just have a lot of birds around here, and I think a couple bug types, so we don't gotta worry too much about the trainers. We might actually... We might just cut past them if I feel the need to, but... Uh, for now, we'll, we'll at least keep going, and plus there's some new encounters we, we can actually find around here, so we might as well talk about them. So in Fire Red specifically, we actually get the introduction of our first uh, area-exclusive Pokemon, at least in terms of odds of finding it, because trust me, you're not going to find the other variation. It's Nidoran Boy and Nidoran Girl. In Fire Red specifically, you have a 14% chance of encountering a Nidoran male, and a 1% chance of encountering Nid Nidoran female. Compared to Leaf Green, it's the inverse. Girls are more often, and boys have a 1% encounter rate. The Nidos are kind of interesting. I think the female specializes in defense, and male specializes in offense. And they're a very odd type of poison ground, which is kind of fun because there is actually a lot of stuff you can do with that typing, but it's also prone to a number of weaknesses, so be careful. Of the two, I'd say Nidoking is probably better, but if you want a good defensive Pokemon early game, I guess Nido Grand Girl can also be kind of useful. And hey, nothing wrong with having a nice poison type early on. Next up, of course, is everyone's favorite uh, singing Puffball. It's Jigglypuff! Yeah, we actually encountered that pretty early on as well, surprisingly. Jigglypuff, all things considered, is not the best normal type you can get, but it's a passable one, I'd say. Um, it's an actual uh, stone-based, or item-based evolution for a new Pokémon, so that's the first we've seen of that. Instead of evolving based on having a certain level reached, you have to give it a certain item, in this case, the Moonstone. Which we've been hearing a lot of stuff about, but we haven't seen any of those yet. Jigglypuff is a pure normal type, it's kind of a jack-of-all-trades in that regard, just like most good normal types. And I think its evolution, Wigglytuff, is... Fine. Not great, not bad, just kind of fine. It's got high high HP and it can do some decent damage as it has a little bit of good uh, special and physical attack, but other than that, it's just sort of there. It can take hits decently well, but there's better Pokemon for that, I think. But hey, good HP on a, on a normal type can't go wrong with that. Alright, and of course we got another bug drug trainer here. Or bug catcher, god, my words are, I'm stumbling all over them. It's every Let's Play team's I just cannot escape this curse. Don't you hate it when that happens? Luckily, Spiro can easily escape the curse of bug types because bird. This reminds me, something I actually always found kind of funny was that originally there was supposed to be a bird type, not a flying type, but uh, bird type actually went kind of unused in the original Generation 1 games. Only way to access it is to encounter the infamous Missing No Glitch, which, if you catch that thing, it is labeled as bird type. Don't know what the heck that's supposed to mean, but eh, that's just how it works. Alright, um, you're kind of low on health, Spiro. Let's uh, heal you up real fast. <clears throat> My throat is uh, acting up, it seems. I don't like it when it does that, but that's just how the world works, I suppose. Alright, what do you have to say? Hi! I like shorts! Oh, no! <laughs> I was... I was wondering when he'd show up. This is Youngster Joey. They're comfy, they're delightfully comfy and easy to wear. Oh, goodness. The man who we made 10,000 memes of and even brought back in Generation Six. Oh, wait a minute. Ben? You're not Youngster Joey. I am offended. I thought for sure it was Youngster Joey that said that. Am I thinking of Gen 6? I probably am. I'm more inclined to have played through Generation 6 recently. Now that I think about it, I actually was playing Pokemon Y a bit before this, so that probably explains a lot. <laughs> Anyways, youngsters always tend to have a Rattata, so just take care of that. It won't last more than a couple seconds. Now he does have an Ekans. 
Which is a bit of a change-up, I suppose. Um, it's not really worth having Emperor out for this, so we can just... Uh, yeah, we'll, yeah we'll, we'll keep you out. Ekans is... Well, it's a pure poison type, which is kind of similar to what Nidoran is, though it doesn't gain a extra type upon evolving like the Nidorans do. Uh, its evolution Arbox is iconic because, well, it's part of Team Rocket's original lineup, so who doesn't like that? Though, honestly, Ekans and Arbok are just sort of there. Their stats are pretty middle of the road at its best stat, which is physical attack is only about 85. Poison is a good type, I always say, but... Eh, there's better poison types out there, including the other member of Team Rocket's group, Coughing, but we'll be seeing that much later. Right now, though, I don't seem to trust that we can actually do well against this Ekans. Uh-oh. Oh shit, it did rap when I wasn't looking. Fuck. Oh no, it's just still doing rap. Great. Yeah, rap was uh, very much the pain of every Generation 1 player's existence back in the day, because when you got wrapped, you could do nothing for a good three turns, waiting for the rap to finish, and then they could just do rap again and waste your time. It was the worst. Please die. Thank you. Whew. Level 13 for Spiro. Nice. Ooh, Fury Attack. That is a multi-hitted move. Most multi-hitted moves are not very strong, but they hit multiple times to try and make up for that. And I don't really suggest keeping them on for the most part, but sometimes you can find a use for one of them. But let's uh, head back and heal. And we're back. All right. Now, uh, more bug type trainers to deal with. I don't think we're actually going to deal with everyone here right away because, one, I don't want to get too over-level doing this, especially since we only have two Pokemon. And two, this could be useful as a spot to come back to later because, unlike the original Generation 1 games, there is a way to refight trainers in this game, which is... Pretty nice, and it does alleviate on the grinding aspect quite a lot. Of course, Spiro can always take care of good old-fashioned bug types, because, eh, Gen 1 bug types. I don't mean to rag on bug types too much, there are a lot of bugs I love, some of my favorites being stuff like Scizor, or Heracross, Durant, Volcarona, but most Gen 1 bug types are not good. The only ones that I'd say are passable are maybe the Venomoth line, Pinsir, and Scyther, which we're not going to be seeing Pinsir and Scyther until much later. <laughs> Oh, this is always easy to take care of these poor saps. Really, dude, you couldn't be bothered to get any of these to level 10. You would have had a Butterfree or, or uh, wow, I can't even remember the name of it. Beedrill, gosh. You would have had a Beedrill. Those are passable at this point in the game. If I had a new Pokemon, I would have won. No, you wouldn't have. Well, now we're getting a bit over-leveled, so let's uh, switch places real fast. Emperor, you take the front. Oh, wait. Ah, uh, right. Um, actually, you can switch back. <laughs> Can't make up my mind, apparently, today. What do you have? I'll battle you with Pokemon I just caught. That's not gonna help you, dude. Of course, once again, a Caterpie and a Weedle, because that's just how everyone works in this game. They're not going to have that much. It's unfortunate, but it's how it works. I think this dude actually just has a Caterpie and a Metapod, I'm willing to bet. Well, that takes care of you. And it's level 14 for Spearow. Pretty good. And more speed, hey, that's always nice. I do appreciate that Spiro is actually surprisingly fast for an early game bird, which, again, speed is always an important factor to have in any battle. It's useful to have, because if you go first, odds are you can be done in one turn. All right, please finish it off. Thank you. And that's enough of that. Done like dinner. Um, I hope to God that's not dinner, because if you're eating your bugs, that's disgusting. Emperor, you take front. Alright, and we can run a bit. Uh, what do you got to say, lady? Oh! Shoot, I didn't know she was a trainer. Eek! Did you touch me? Um, not that I can see. No. Last Robin. I think you have a... Yep, Jigglypuff. So we can actually see the puffball in action. Jigglypuffs, again, they just have a lot of HP... Just as long as you thwack them pretty hard, you can slowly chip them down. Oh, don't you dare! 
Disables an annoying move. That will actually just temporarily uh, prevent you from using the move that you last used against it. Or you can just do pound, I guess. Okay. Well, I'll just do leech seed to sap your health away. And get all that back, sucker. But yeah, a small bit of their health that we sapped was almost all the health they dealt to us in damage. So that's how much health Jigglypuff has. If you want something that can just be out there as a shield, it's not a bad choice at all, I'd say. It's probably the best one you can get so far. Oh, come on! Well, at least he'll die from good old Leech Seed. There we go. And level 14 for Emperor. Good buff to the special attack and special defense. That's nice. Always appreciated. And we defeated you. That's it? Yep, it is. Alright, head over this way. I think there's a hidden item around here somewhere, actually, but we shouldn't worry about that. Whew, I better take a rest. Ugh. That tunnel from Cerulean takes a lot out of you. Tunnel. What do you have to say? Route 3, or Route 3. Mount Moon ahead. Oh, look, would you look at that? And it actually, actually turns out we're actually at route, route, route 4 now instead. Uh, what do you people have to say? Oh, wow, that's the Boulder Badge. You got it from Brock, didn't you? Brock is cool. He's not just tough. People like him, respect him. I want to become a gym leader like him. Uh, what do you got? Ouch, you tripped over a rocky Pokemon. Geodude, that sounds like a bad time. Then again, how do you trip over a rock with arms? You should be able to notice that. Surprisingly, though, there's a Pokemon Center out here of all places. So we'll use that to get a quick heal. And I believe there's actually something important we can do in this place specifically. Someone here has something important. Okay, six Pokeballs in my belt. Yeah, that'll do it. And most of you can have six Pokemon with you. That is true. Team Rocket attacks Cerulean citizens. Not a day goes by without Team Rocket being in the news. Oof, doesn't sound fun. Sometimes you'll have too many Pokemon with you to add anymore. In that case, you should just store some by using any PC. Yep, the PC right here can actually store any Pokemon you've caught, as I mentioned before. Always useful to check that if you want to take a look at your teammates that you've sent to your PC. Here it is. Hello there, laddie. Have I got a deal just for you? I'll let you have a secret Pokemon, a Magikarp, for just $500. So you'll buy it, am I right? <laughs> sure, why not? We paid an outrageous $500 to the Magikarp. Do I wish you could give a nickname for this Magikarp? Kind of, actually. I don't plan to use Magikarp, but it's only fair that we talk about it. Magikarp is a notoriously terrible Pokemon. It is dreadfully bad, and it has... One move starting out, Splash, which does no damage. It's the greatest move ever as a result. But uh, I'm going to call you eh, probably Leviathan. Shout out to Final Fantasy. But no, the joke with, with Magikarp is that it is a horrible Pokemon. And for good reason, because it's actually meant to be that. Because if you're willing to put the time into it to train it up to a certain point, roughly level 20, it will evolve into Gyarados, which is one of the best Pokemon you can ask for in Gen 1. It's big, it's menacing. It's got Intimidate for an ability, it's got great stats, it's a water flying type, which means it's kind of screwed by electric now that I think about it, but you could do worse. Let's take a look at you real fast, just for the heck of it, Magikarp. Oh, goodness. So yeah, Splash is its only move, and it does literally zero damage. Just, just don't bother. You can get Magikarp's all over the place once you acquire a fishing rod, which we'll be getting pretty soon. I don't think we'll be getting until the next town over, but we're relatively close to that area, actually. This ability Swift Swim means it was faster than rain, but that doesn't mean much when you physically can't attack. And you have an adamant nature? Um, what nature was that again? Um, let me think about this. Adamant, adamant, adamant. Oh, wait. Now I remember. That's plus attack minus special attack. That's actually pretty decent for a Magikarp, actually, because Gyarados is a physical attacker. So all things considered, that's actually not too bad, but since we're not really going to use you, I just wanted to show you off. We'll be putting you in storage. Storage, of course, you have upwards of 30 Pokemon per box, and you can have around 14 boxes at a time, so you get a lot of storage. This is pretty much how you're going to be storing your massive amounts of Pokemon you collect if you're the type of person that likes to fill out the Pokedex. Thankfully, we're not doing that because I'm not a masochist, but that was the breaks. You might be wondering, why the heck there's a Pokemon Center way out here? Well, Mount Moon. That's why. This is our next big dungeon for the game, Mount Moon. 
But I think we'll be saving that till next time, actually. We've taken out the first gym leader and we've made our way to Mount Moon. It's only fair that we give that this place a chance to explore itself in its own individual part. So next time, let's play Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. We'll be heading off into Mount Moon to explore it and see what we can find on the other side. So until next time, ice out.